Yes Chef with Ryan. That's right, it's Tuesday. It means it's food time. Chef Ryan's in the studio for Yes Chef. And wow, today we've got a visual treat in the studio, Ryan. It's you. Kind of pretty. No, you, of course. Oh, thanks. Very you got pretty. a haircut, I think, didn't I, you? I did get a haircut on the weekend. Um, thank you for noticing that as well. Um, but today, I've been previewing it all day as fan muscles. But I think a more accurate one is the pin. Pin shell. Pin shell. Yeah, P I N um, shell, and and that's there's a lot of different varieties, mm -hmm. um, but uh, there's there's this one here in Korea, and and there'll be um, well you can see it right here if you if you're watching the video. And, yeah, if you've got the um, video radio on, take a look because it looks stunningly presented today. Um, so Korea, you know, we've got the four distinct seasons, and mm -hmm. I think one of the best things about that is different seasons have the different foods. Absolutely. You know? uh, yeah. And, and so. We've been saying that this is enjoyed towards the end of spring. Uh, yeah, I mean it's it's in season right now. Mm -hmm. um, they're at their their cheapest. You can get them usually year round, uh -huh. um, but they're they're at their cheapest and best quality right now. And uh, and look at them, they're they're awesome. When I first saw these. Um, before you know coming to Asia, I had never seen these before. Oh really? You know, is I, it a thing just in Asia? Um, for consumption anyway, yeah, it's uh, Japan, Korea, a little bit of Southeast Asia, I believe. Uh -huh. um, yeah, because yeah. they look just like huge muscles, like right. from the outside. The shells right. themselves are like I don't know what would you say like five to ten times bigger than an average muscle. I, I've seen some that'll be, you know, almost a foot long. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I mean, they're... <laughs> and, and yeah, on the outside, they do. They look like a huge muscle. Mm -hmm. um, and it is, you know, it's a it's a bivalve. It's a sea mollusk. And, and uh, on the inside, though, it's not like a muscle. You know, no. a, a muscle on the inside, it just has that one fleshy part, right? Mm -hmm. Um, these are actually more like scallops on the inside. Yeah, they look like yeah. giant scallops inside. I'll, I'll post a picture that I took last night when I was preparing some of these, and and uh, and folks can see what they look like just opened up. Too. Did you buy them uh, alive? From Absolutely, the market? absolutely. Why buy them? You know, already taken care of. If this if, is true. Uh, if you can get them so fresh. So. so how much are these? I would I would imagine they're expensive, no? Um, you know, I've got I've got some pretty good relationships with the market that <laughs> yes. I've cultivated for you know almost a decade, I guess, and and uh, and so I picked up three for eight or ten thousand won, something like that. Wow! And then I got a few other things too. Okay, yeah. three yeah. for eight to ten bucks is not bad at all. Yeah. And then how big is the meat inside usually? Um, well, if you look at this, if you can see this piece, uh -huh. this is the diameter. Now I've sliced that thinly. Because um, I've kind of cured these overnight. Okay. Um, so that is all that was in one shell, is it? That like is quantity? the the main scallop part. Uh -huh. now, there's there are other pieces, and there you can eat all of it. Um, but they're they're very different, you know. Um, uh, some folks really like uh, the other parts, and some folks like don't, the kind of so. innerdy bits. Right, right, right. Uh, I'm more of a fan of the fleshy part. Sure, I I'm pretty sure you're gonna like this one the most. And you I'm say starting you... to understand what Peter likes, really what he doesn't like. <laughs> I'm not too adventurous in terms of how something looks. Like if it's a bit weirdy, beardy, then I'm not too much of a fan of it. But something like this, yeah, I'm a big fan of scallops after all. Well, this one reminds me of a scallop I had in Mexico, and I didn't see it in the show but it has that firm texture uh -huh. um, so what you know like sea scallops the ones you often see in markets back in the West before you cook them they're really really soft okay right yeah but after you cook them just right they get this nice little bite to them you yeah know, like a pop and a little juice. firmness yeah these on the other hand they're pretty firm already oh okay they're not all soft and wobbly right when right, you get them raw right. so you slice them thin then I've cured this with uh, lemon juice a little vinegar um, and kind of done this in a seasonal way uh, more my own style on mm -hmm. this one and then this one over here is what you'll see at the um, the choge gui the grilled clam restaurants uh, with the vinegar red pepper paste and then even mozzarella cheese on top which <laughs> which kind of makes me cringe a little bit I must say <laughs> but you will see it a lot here but people like it and I thought you know why not show folks exactly what you you'll see 
uh, when you when you come to restaurants in Korea. For so. sure, for sure. So uh, these fan muscles or pin shells, however we want to call them, they're kijoge nonetheless in Korean. Um, mm. Apparently contain a lot of good vitamins like vitamin A, B1, B2, B3. 6 C Big and time. E uh, time, just yeah. like crabs rich in minerals as well uh, so they got a lot of goodness in there taurine as well to give you a boost well, I didn't know about the taurine I, I, did you hear that the shells have been used some I'm not sure how but they'll get the color uh-huh. the shiny bits from yep. the inside of the shell and they've been used in like really expensive clothing for centuries in clothing yeah across the wow. Mediterranean even. I didn't know so, that at all yeah, yeah. I, I know they use some kind of pearl and other shells in the furniture here in Korea. You know, the black abalone shells. Cupboards. In the fur- I love that. Yeah, yeah, it looks beautiful, doesn't it? And not putting anything to waste. That's a fantastic yeah. thing to do. Uh, so this version on, if you're watching the video radio, I guess, well, the one that I'm holding up right now, this is just the main part, the meaty part, sliced and cured. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't say that's a traditional Korean thing to do, right? Cure it like No, that. but, you know, when, when researching... And, and looking at all these, uh, you know, Korea has really had a renaissance uh, on on the culinary scene in the past mm. five or six years. So uh, I was just at a Korean Jamaican restaurant last week. You know? Korean Jamaican fusion, it's amazing. What? Yes, it works really well together because the sweet, the spicy, the sour all come together just like in in Jamaican and Korean cuisines. Um, and American Southern food sometimes has that, like barbecue sauce is sweet, sour, spicy. So just in the last five, six, seven years, I think Korea's really had a rebirth um, of a lot of their cuisine. And so people are chefs around the city, around the country are using these in all different kinds of ways. I've seen people doing uh, curries with them, kind of like a Southeast Asian kind of curry with them. I've seen, wow. Um, you know, just... Just like stir fried, there's there's so many good uses, and when when you've got these great seasonal ingredients, you just gotta explore and play with them. Yeah, so, so things are changing in Korea certainly, but as you said, the other version with the mozzarella cheese, so you can't mm-hmm. see too much inside. We'll show you when we eat it. Um, that's more traditional with like the choge kui, right? When you kind of have it on the grill and they'll put the shell on there. Do you like that? You don't. You're not too big of a fan of no. I, 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 no, the choge kui is better for me than the jim. Okay. Um, yeah. You f- you get it on the grill, you get it really hot, all the juices, and then when you put in the cheese and then like the spicy kind of sauce in there, sure, then sure. it kind of masks all the flavors that maybe I'm not <laughs> so comfortable with. Okay. What I really love about this in the restaurants um, is that as you open up each of your clams, your other clams, different sizes and shapes, you know, yeah. you usually will like kind of let the juice fall into this great big pin shell mm-hmm. that's sitting over kind of a a not as hot part of the fire yeah um and it's sitting there for a while um just bubbling away as you add more um clam liquor to to this shell yeah that has the cut up bits of the pin shell in there and vinegar red pepper paste the chojung mm-hmm. um sometimes there'll be toasted sesame oil sometimes onion sometimes corn sometimes i've oh, seen so many different things bad with the cheese uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but it's it, it just kind of comes together, and I'm always like, oh no, it's gonna overcook that pin shell because it's on the. But it, it it's done slow. They've been doing it for a long time. They figured it out. Mm. I hope that I'm afraid this one's gonna be a little chewy because because I had to cook this at home for you and then and then bring it here. Uh, I thought about bringing a range in here, but I was told no fire in the studio. So. Yeah, I think that is a safety yeah. hazard here, unfortunately. Yeah. But yeah, it looks like the real deal. And you're right. When they put in all the different clams and shellfishes juice, you get mm. this wonderful cocktail oh, of all man. these flavors. Yeah. Well, you you probably like that deep flavor in Duenjang or the mm-hmm. deep flavor in like a bajirak kalguk soup, oh, the yeah. knife cut noodle soup. For sure. And all that really nice depth of flavor is coming from the the clams really. yeah all right well without further ado if you're watching the video radio um we're gonna try maybe go for the cured one first which is kind oh. of just basically that flavor so this hasn't been cooked at all this is dill from my rooftop garden um mm-hmm. and uh, i just harvested it this morning except for the one that i had in the cure last night uh-huh. with just lemon juice um a little bit of white balsamic uh it's kind of similar to a ceviche um but uh so you but, advise to eat it with the dill? Oh, sure, sure, oh, wow. sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I can yeah. feel already in the chopsticks. This is quite firm. Right. Compared to a scallop, which would be a lot more wobbly and, like, falling out. I think you, you won't be put off by that texture. I think you'll Okay, like it. let's but give we'll it a see. go. Yeah. Okay. Mmm. 
Oh, no, I love it. Mm, the lemon. I had a feeling you dig mm. that one. Yeah, it's really fresh. Try to get a balance and and hold the the natural sweetness that's in that that scallop part or the foot of the um, of the pin shell. Yeah, and uh, that's not been cooked at all. That's well, it's the cooked texture. by the acid. Sure. It takes about when you slice it this thin, maybe two or three hours, and it's and it's cooked through. By the that is delicious. Acid and the lemon juice. Absolutely delicious because of the texture. If it was a bit like a raw scallop, then maybe it would be a little bit funny to have in your mouth. You know, you might be a bit put off by mm. that wobbliness and stuff. But mm. it tastes like as if it's been grilled or something. It really like does, that. right? No. Brilliant. That's so so delicious. Well, it makes your mouth water a lot. It's mm. a lot of lemon. Mm. So you can do that for many seafoods as well, right? Just mm. that same formula with the lemon juice. Absolutely. Like, if I'm using squid or octopus, I'll usually blanch them briefly uh -huh. just to get the texture that I really want. Okay, You drop sure. those those kind of things straight into, like, a brine with a vinegar or, or lemon. They don't get that pop texture to them. Yeah. But um, different kinds of fish and definitely this one because it, oh, my mouth is watered so much it's hard to talk. <laughs> Um, this one because the texture already exists kind of the way you want it naturally yeah. you don't have to play with it too much that's brilliant okay so so what if I'm doing say one of those what quantities are we talking about like half a lemon um you know that you're just gonna have to play yeah. with yeah. yeah I mean you're just gonna taste it and 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 play with it Before remember you put it in, taste it if you I often will add onions to something like this, and always I tell my students, remember that when you add onions to something and there's mm. salt or acid there, yeah. it's going to be pulling sweetness out of those onions over time. Okay. Okay. Well, that's so, a good thing? That's a really great thing, yeah. yeah. But you, you just have to, when you taste it initially, you have to know that later there'll be more liquid there because mm -hmm. it's going to pull the moisture out of the onion, yeah. and along with it, it'll pull the sweetness. Uh -huh. So if you're adding some kind of sweetener to some kind of a ceviche like this or, or a cure like this, mm -hmm. um, just keep that in mind. Okay. Because um, more sweetness will come from the onions. I don't feel like many amateur chefs, especially in Korea, just like housewives and house husbands who cook, will do this often, you know. It's not a common thing to do in the UK, I don't believe, but it sounds so simple and it tastes so good. The The beauty of it here is if you buy these in the market here, they will totally open and clean and do everything for you. So they could just hand you a bag of just that big foot mm -hmm. uh, scallop part and the other bits. And then you can take it at home, slice it right up and put on, you know, in this case, lemon juice, a little uh, white wine vinegar, red wine vinegar, yeah. lime juice. Yeah. And it's so simple. And then you just leave it for a few hours. Right. And then it's ready yeah, yeah. in the fridge. Oh, so, amazing. All right. I'll tell you what we do. We're going to listen to a song and then we'll okay. eat the kind of more traditional Korean one cool. with the cheese on it. I'm looking forward to that. That looks delicious. Visually amazing. Uh, let's listen to some Rainbow. Tell me, tell me. It's time for part two of Yes Chef with Ryan. We're talking kijoge, or the pin shells, or the fan muscles. Maybe that's the dictionary uh, translation of kijoge. In the studio, the shells look like giant mussels. Then the main oh, meat huge. looks like a giant scallop. Oh, I yeah. love these things. I mean, look, look how ginormous these are. Yeah, if you've never seen this, because I've never seen them in Europe, I don't think, like being served or anything. They really uh, make great like plates you know, absolutely like, you could reuse them right as a little serving dish i was shocked at how big it was and i thought it was going to be a giant mussel and you know when i'm eating mussels if the mussels themselves get too big i get a bit freaked out like there's the green mussels okay yeah and yeah. you know they're big and meaty i know yeah I've i find those. that a bit of a mouthful you know there's all the <laughs> weird little bits inside you know the bit that sticks out the brown bit yeah, you got to pull the beards off. Eat sure. Yeah, you don't yeah. want those beardy bits in there. Yeah. But this, even with those out, when they get too big, I'm like, oh, I can feel everything in my mouth. It feels too real. There's a there's a Turkish rep re recipe that I love with mussels uh -huh. um, where you open them up when they're still alive and then you just stuff them full of rice that's partially cooked and cinnamon and, oh, that wow. and all these different While herbs. While they're alive. And, yeah, and then you tie a string around them and steam them. Wow. And those green ones, those big guys, yeah. they're almost impossible to open when they're, they're still so alive. Strong, yeah. <laughs> you just have to put them in warm water and hope they'll relax enough to pop them open. Oh, they're wow. really strong, yeah. 
Oh, that sounds a little bit dangerous. Like if they close and nip your finger. Huh? I've got bad. these gloves. Have you ever seen those chainmail gloves? Oh wow, they're really? kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. You cannot stab it, and then you have to have the uh, kind of the oyster knife. Yeah, um, which doesn't have too sharp of a point on it. Uh-huh. Just sharp enough to get into the shell, but wow. not sharp enough to hopefully go through your hand. Well, that's some professional chef equipment. Oh there. man, I've I've hurt myself so many times doing oysters in the winter time. You know, Without shucking those gloves, hundreds on. of them that I finally just got the gloves. <laughs> That sounds cool, like out of uh, the medieval times, like knights it in is, shining it's armor. Mail, right? yeah. uh, we got a few messages here, uh, and from Singapore saying, "I'm watching the live video now, and the muscles and the scallops look absolutely mouthwatering." Well, they're not scallops, but it looks like scallop meat in there, right? Yeah, I mean, you could call it a scallop for sure. I mean, uh, essentially, that's what a scallop is too. It's oh. it's the foot that uh-huh. the kind of that strongest muscle that holds that shell closed. Yeah, it um, is a complete mutant. The shell is a muscle shell, or so to my eyes, and mm. the the meat is a scallop. So I would call it a scallop muscle. There it is. There it is. <laughs> that's not the official name. It's key <laughs> Um And it said, I like scallops more than mussels, but cheese on mussels are a must eat for me. Is that a thing also in Singapore? Cheese on mussels, I wonder. How about you yourself, Ryan? Are you a muscle man or a scallop man? Uh, if you I, had to choose. I love scallops. Me too. I really love scallops. And now what I've, what I've learned to love more, actually, not the scallop itself when you get the whole shell, mm-hmm. but when you get the ones that have the orange kind of row on the side. Oh, yes. It's yeah. amazing. Really? That does look a bit freaky again. That's the chef's treat, man. You just got to take those and, and hide them for yourself. But sometimes in restaurants in England, they'll like give you the whole thing, you mm-hmm. know, with that attached. Mm-hmm. And it's not bad at all, actually. Yeah. The texture's completely different. Oh, uh, if you just fry those up in butter, you're, really? you're happy. Yeah. <laughs> you're in heaven. Uh, Siska says, I'm not a fan of mussels, but scallops and cockles are yummy. I like mm-hmm. both. I think scallops are a good, like, gateway food to shellfish. You know, it's, it's so funny you say this. Um, <laughs> my my dad always says to about my mom, she, you know, she loves scallops, but she doesn't like shellfish. And if she, uh-huh. if she knew, and now, you know, this is kind of a family joke, but, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, a lot of people back in the West don't realize what the shell looks like that a scallop comes from. Yeah, you know? yeah. So you could show them something like this, and they might think that it comes from the same place as that, because they look so similar. It's true, yeah. But I'm sure if you showed it in the shell, maybe it would put a few people off, right? Well, they, well those are, the scallops are those beautiful fan shells, you know. Yeah. yeah. And Will yeah. asks us a question. Is this mainly or only found in Asia, or could I source it in North America as well? Uh, Will, I've never seen them in North America, but uh, something tells me in colder waters, maybe on the north uh, west coast, um, I bet you they they exist. They just may not be an, as much of a market for them, so there's nobody going out and, and looking for them. So. Which is odd, because like we said, the meat is kind of meaty and scallopy. Surely there'd be an appeal for it. No? In, in research, I found that there are a lot of recent um, academic studies and research papers that are published about this uh, particular product. Really? And, and I think that might be due to the fact that um, it hasn't emerged in the West mm-hmm. and could emerge in the West, so maybe those those studies uh-huh. those academic papers are the forefront to this showing up in markets becoming back popular in i'm right. sure that meatiness just like a scallop it would yeah. go well with many like western dishes seafood brokers in, the, in that world that business world seafood brokers are always work looking for the next big thing that they can push in new markets we so. need to get onto that ryan yeah. ryan and peter's seafood broker business there you go i like it selling <laughs> these key joggers around the world so let's go on and try the korean version so Before that the... cheese is a little harder uh... now so it might be a bit difficult to work through it was so hot when i brought it in uh it looks so good though so this is what happens they put this on the grill they'll melt the cheese on top you've even put the spicy marinade underneath as well have you mm. oh wow and this has got all the bits has it has it got the innards mm. and the the weird yeah, small bits? grab one of the smaller bits you don't have to do the giant okay let me get a bit mm. of oh wow look so if you see under the cheese as well you can see what's going on in here Look at that. Doesn't that look delicious? And there are all little mm. weirdy beardy bits and pieces. Um, I'm going to take a bit of the meaty bit. You know, the cheese does kind of work. There. Right? It's, it's a little... Yeah. It's a little odd for Get me. Get on but... board. <laughs> mm. Now, mm. the the texture's not the best because, of course, this was, you know, done sure. in 
It's, it's a little not bit done chewy. at your table the way that you have it normally at restaurants in Korea. Well, yeah, but the cheese is also chewy, so you don't really right. Notice maybe too that's much. the maybe that's why the cheese made it in there because it it masks the chewiness of the <laughs> and the sauce, the marinade there. It mm. gives a nice kick to it, and the cheese. That's what it's often there for in mm. spicy dishes in Korea, right? To balance it out. You used to see with the uh, puldak or fire chicken, you'd have the cheese topping to kind of lessen the heat there. That was it's a good delicious. bite. That was a good bite. That was a lot of cheese, and it was a really nice bite. So is that just literally the gochujang, the chili pepper paste, mm-hmm. and a little bit of toasted sesame oil, mm-hmm. um, a little bit of ginger juice? Ginger juice. You can just kind of like grade ginger and, and uh, little pieces of the ginger in there are fine, but if you can kind of get a little bit of juice, that works well. Mm. A lot of people add a tiny bit of maishil, okay. maybe a little bit of a sweetener like mulyod or a starch syrup kind of thing. And that's the innards, right? That's some... There are a lot of different parts yeah. that you'll find in there. And this is not the row. This is kind of like the, kind of like a skirt around the edge. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, I think it's great. It's a little less meaty and firm, right? Mm-hmm. And taste away. Mm. Oh, it's really nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is how you can get it at the Chogegui places, which are the grilled shellfish fit places in Korea. And even there, they'll leave you to kind of, they'll tell you when it's ready. But then a lot of the times it will get overcooked or undercooked. But despite that, mm-hmm. I think it tastes brilliant either way. Like these, like you said, maybe a bit overcooked, a bit chewy, but they still taste so good with this sauce and this cheese together. Yeah. Oh wow! It is so so. It's awesome. a lot of it's a lot of fun at those restaurants. You <laughs> you get a glove to yes. protect your hands from the hot clams, mm-hmm. and uh, and you're just prying these these things open as they pop open mm. um, over a really hot fire right in front of you, and then and enjoy them fresh. It's such an exotic experience for me coming from the UK when I first saw that. Mm-hmm. They just put these all on a barbecue grill in front of you, and they're all popping open. The juices are flowing falling onto the coals underneath and right. sparking up. It's amazing. And, and you the smells bucket flavors. under your table to throw the shells in after you're done. And <laughs> yes. Um, you'll it. often in many Korean restaurants have a like bin next to your table to throw away bones and things like this, so. leftovers. So delicious, Ryan. Uh, so many more messages coming in as well. Uh, Aaron from the US says, Kijoge, it looks so yummy. I'm a huge fan of clam chowder, so I believe that I'd instantly be a fan. Is there a huge difference in the taste compared to normal clams? Okay. Um, well, when you do it, when you cure it, I think, and you slice it thin, you do get this, well, you get that from other clams too. That that subtle sweetness uh-huh. that you get from from shellfish. Um, I, I love that. And, and there's no shortage of it <clears throat> in that muscly part of uh or the scallop kind of part of the pin shells Mm -hmm. um if you wanted to do a clam chowder with this you you could probably make a a nice big bowl of clam chowder with just one pin shell i think so right just chop it all up and and all the bits like to give you a difference in texture yeah because after trying that meaty bit with the cheese and the sauce i then want to have the inner bit like the smoother bits as Mm -hmm. well to kind of balance it out because that can get a bit chewy inside and it is all masked almost by that spicy kick in the sauce, I think. Oh, not so good. It's not there to mask it, I though, know, Peter. I know. I'm just telling the truth, though. <laughs> um, and uh, you've asked, have any of the listeners ever tried these? I wonder if any of our Asian listeners who can surely get their hands on this kijoge, the pin shells or the fan mussels, have you tried this? Is there a way to cook it in your country as well? Uh, you've also said, Aaron, the Korean dish with cheese sounds and looks really interesting. Give it a try. Don't be put off like thinking it's an abomination because it does taste not bad at all it works man yeah um 21 crush i'm more of a meat guy to be honest the only time i would ever eat seafood is if i want to try it like crab mussels or fillet of fish all in all i'm more meaty and that's my sea food um (laughs) would this go together well with any meats as well it's a bit meaty surf and turf yeah you think with a steak on the side a bit of this on the side absolutely little charred romaine <laughs> little steak and um this doing it this way this is such a great appetizer oh brilliant as um, a starter yeah and this is an incredible side dish to go along with anything else is it used in any other korean dishes like familiar dishes for koreans i don't think you put it in any soups or stocks or anything like that right there's nothing that's that really stands out that mm. you'd see you know a lot of across the board 
um, actually in, in researching this um, uh, in, in Korean and, and looking at Korean blogs and, and different sh what chefs are doing around here with this, often they're using uh, techniques from other countries mm -hmm. um, to, to enjoy this this awesome ingredient this the the one that's cured and raw but cooked by the acid i think mm -hmm. that would go well in like a muchim you know in the nice cold salad no a muchim cool. is kind of a ceviche that's like true. a mulhue kind yeah. of or, yeah and like you said with the onions there if you had raw onions with that even red onions mm -hmm. i reckon that'd be a great texture kind of difference to have um diamond press Roz from the u.s is working at the moment in the united kingdom in epcot you know the epcot center mm. and she's watching and drooling over this vision of yumminess uh and you can't tune in for long but you're dying here Roz. well yeah if you can't get these maybe try it with scallops maybe that'll work mm. i don't know like you said with a scallop if you wanted to cure them would you have to boil them quickly quickly first to get a texture that you want um you know sea scallops um the way we know them back in the west they're so good just seared with some butter i don't know if i would want to do well no i've had some good ceviches but only with like the baby scallops not with the big jumbo guys it's hard to find reasonably priced scallops here i find at the supermarket i, I don't go to the sea uh, food markets often enough maybe that's my problem mm -hmm. but sometimes you'll see those baby scallops like the tiny ones but mm -hmm. even those are quite pricey here um if you're really looking for like those uh jumbo sea mm. scallops in korea you're pr pretty much your only option is a frozen imported product really what we have here um, are amazing in and of themselves, but they're not that variety. They're not that deep water, really big, fat sea scallop. Oh. What we have here is it's a little shorter, flatter, and it's it's amazing. It's delicious, but they are expensive because they're they're really good and they're highly priced. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah that's why I haven't been able to find them. When you do the choge gui, you know you only get like one of those per person. Yeah, the other clams true. you've got like ten, twenty per person, but, <laughs> yeah. but that one you only get one. And this one though, you as well, you don't get too many of the key jogues because I guess they're quite big and yeah. uh, meaty. Uh, Siska said you mentioned about the Jamaican Korean fusion, mm. and I wanted to ask you, Ryan, is jerk sauce only for marinated meat, or can it also be used for vegetables like potatoes or corn? Oh, man, that would totally work on potatoes or corn. Sure, why not? Um, but definitely try to make your own jerk. Um, it's a lot of time, fresh time, if you can find it. Uh, a lot of zest. Uh -huh. you know, get orange zest, lemon zest, lime zest. Um, then s cinnamon, allspice is really important in there. Oh, wow. And then some kind of fresh, spicy chili. Uh, for the traditional jerk, you want to try to find a scotch bonnet, but... You know, just a mix of green and red chilies that are nice and hot mm. um, and a little bit of the orange juice to kind of balance that heat with some sweetness. Uh, jerk seasoning is, is incredible. Is it more, because I don't use jerk at all at home, mm. is it more of like just a powder that you rub in or is there a sauce to it, like a uh, liquid element? If you, if you want to be lazy, <laughs> you can buy a powder that you just rub in. But uh -huh. like I said, if you if you make your own um, jerk seasoning, it's, it's phenomenal with the fresh thyme and the fresh zest. Okay. Um, some of the powders, I've had some that are, you know, a pre-made mix that work pretty well, but... Um, but you got to make it. You yeah, always recommend so that, Ryan. You're yeah. right about it. It's just sometimes we get a bit lazy. Uh, Will mm -hmm. from Canada says, I've got another question involving scallops. Are you familiar with exo sauce? I believe it's a Chinese one, and I've oh, fallen yeah. in love with it. Oh, but yeah. is there a Korean type sauce that is comparable to it? Uh, seeing as there are so many types of chili sauces, I'd be interested in trying it. Um, you know, exo sauce has more fishiness to it then um, the Korean sauces, what we do is we combine different things. One has the fishiness, like the, the ekjot, um, which is like an anchovy um, extract sauce. And then we'll take that with the red pepper sauce and mm -hmm. combine them. But they're kind of sold separately usually. Um, so we don't have a sauce that's like that so much where it's already got the fish. I love exo sauce too. Um, every time I go over to Hong Kong, I pick some up and bring it back with me. Um, oh, do they sell it just in bottles like that, the exo sauce? Oh man, I've seen it in, oh, wow. in some traditional markets over there and, and it's really, really nice stuff. Yeah. Oh yeah, I often see it on the Chinese menu, you know, the exo sauce with mm. whatever meat it may be or some seafoods and stuff. I never go for it. I don't know why. Uh, yeah, I've never had it. You haven't tried it's it. It's quite try, fishy. Try, it is. It, uh, fishy and spicy. Yeah, no, yeah. I wouldn't mind that in a spicy kind of context. 
it works it really works well it's it's sweet uh definitely there's a seafood element to it and then a little bit of spicy not super spicy though mm, yeah. okie dokie well so mm. much interest in this i wish this was more available in europe and north america mm. um but if you come to korea or this region please do try it out seeing as we've got no messages from our southeast asian listeners about this being there mm-hmm. i wonder if this is or it has a name that is incomparable to the Korean or English names, whether this is quite exclusive to this region around Korea, Japan, maybe. I I know that there are a few countries definitely um, around Southeast Asia. I was looking at them yesterday where this is available, Mm -hmm. Um, but maybe... They're often sold to Korea and Japan, um, where they consume locally. Yeah, if you do see it, give it a try. Uh, Try out our recipes that we said today as well. 21 Crush to finish things off says clam chowder. I'm Asian, but English clam chowder is amazing. Or is that New England clam chowder, perhaps, is amazing? I love it. Uh, Yeah, not a big thing in the UK, actually, clam chowder. I've tried it a few times, but it's good. Is it not? Okay. Um, You like clam chowder? Yeah. I, I do it every with my new students. It's a great way for them to practice bechamel uh-huh. and and incorporate it into some dish. And fantastic. And they do it every every year. It's good stuff. Call uh, me when you do that. Hopefully okay. in the winter time, right? Uh, so today Ryan and I talked about the key jogger, the fan mussels or pin shells, mm-hmm. because Korea is a peninsula surrounded by water. It makes sense to eat a lot of seafood, and it's in season right now at the end of spring. If you want to check out this video, then you can check it out on YouTube or via the Adidang Radio channel, and tune in every Tuesday for Yes Chef on hashtag Daily K, keeping you up to date with the latest news from Korea every single day from 9 to 11 a.m.